Hello everyone, my name is Aaron Mazeo. I love to surf and I surf weekly. Today I am excited to talk to you about how and why and the benefits of modifying your glasses or sunglasses to help you be able to keep them on your head and surf throughout the year. Let's go ahead and first talk about how we can modify our sunglasses. And the idea is pretty straightforward and simple. We are going to drill holes in the plastic frames of our sunglasses. And for the carabiners that I use and have found to be quite effective and nice, you can drill up to 1 8 inch in diameter. So I would start with a 16th inch diameter bit move to something in between and then get to 1 8 inch and to give you just a little bit of an idea here is a video of of me doing this in the past it's really too bold. yeah did you so hey, this is 1 8 inch to do this easily you get your hand drill and box the cardboard it's not that hard yeah. and there's a nice little nut often on these plastic maybe it's where there. the injection pin was for injection molding i do not know i'm but going to wipe like this that's not spot okay yeah that's looking pretty good that's looking okay. better and then once you've done both sides. We're going to make a big to a bigger one. Yeah. Okay, so we seem to be pretty much done. Actually, the one eighth inch uh, bit seemed to have done the trick. We can take our little clips that we have here. Whoops, right here. And just put them in like that. That's on one side, right? And then you can do it on the other side as well. It was nice and easy. Try it on. You want me to try it on? Okay, like that. Try so that. now these should hold pretty well. And we've yeah. converted a pair of sunglasses that, these are actually prescription sunglasses. Um, and we've converted them to, to being able to stay on uh, one's head while they... Uh... Okay, well, so we've drilled the holes through and you can see that we've put the clips in as well. and. We also have to create the leash. So to do that, what I suggest is using paracord. And I have here a link, and this link is below as well, that takes you to some inexpensive paracord that you can you can buy. And this material made out of nylon is is extremely strong and tough and works really well with these mini carabiners which you can also find on Amazon and which are also included as a link below in the description for this this video when you are preparing the the cord it's useful to keep a couple more things in mind one is you want to get the right length so you can go ahead and cut it a little bit long and then you can feed it through and tie a little overhand knot so i think you can kind of see there's a little overhand knot it's very simple you know you just go like this essentially right and you put that little overhand knot and that overhand knot once tied once pulled tight is plenty strong to keep your carabiner from coming off. And here's, I guess, a little bit of a, a closer up in terms of what the carabiner looks like. After you have tied this knot and after you're satisfied with the length that you have, what you want to do is cut the end of the cord. And that will fray. It's a nylon paracord. It will fray unless you burn the end. So you can go ahead and, and burn that in, and then you're complete. 
with this type of work, I, I suggest that you try it out a few times, get the lengths right. And when I say length correct, what I'm talking about is making sure that it goes nice and pretty close to the back of your head. And it actually gives you a little bit of space in the front. Why do we want that space? Well, I will suggest that that space can be helpful for preventing fogging. I found when I've used other glasses that have kind of this variable band that sometimes I will, because it has a variable band and it's not a fixed length that you've customized perfectly, if I go too tight, then the glasses are right up, you know, against my face. And when I'm breathing or surfing and exerting all that energy that's creating heat, the glasses will fog up very nicely. So I, I well, or not nicely, I guess you could say. So I suggest that you go ahead and you actually purposely leave just a little bit of a gap. Now, that gap you don't, you don't want it to be too big because then of course the glasses might be able to fly off unnecessarily or what you'll find is and this is something that you you know you can be concerned about is that they can also flop down and uh, that can be a, a little bit problematic so we have to be sensitive to what the appropriate length of that cord should be but once you fix it you're you're set Another thing in terms of how to keep them on your head that I think is important is the use of some type of hat or some type of hood. So in this case, I really like, this is a, I guess a, a surf hat made by the kind of has a nice little visor, a, a stiffer, a stiffener inside some type of piece of plastic. And what I found is that when I use during the summer months, these two in comp combination with each other and put around the head or the band, I don't know if it's a, whatever this thing, the, the strap around my neck. This is a great combination and allows you to go under the waves, duck dive, allows you to turtle roll and your, your glasses are going to stay on your face. Okay, so those are some tips in terms of how to keep your glasses on your head and it is inexpensive to do this for some reference i have used or i started with these glasses which are eddie bauer glasses that i got from costco they were about 32 dollars and i went ahead and i tried my modification and it's worked great the second pair of glasses that I have here are from Zenny's and these are prescription glasses and you can get certain brands with a strap on it that have a prescription I will suggest that it will be more expensive than what I spent here so I was able to spend about hundred and twenty dollars for prescription glasses that have polarization have polycarbonate lenses in them and some anti-reflecting and anti-fogging properties and these have been great i really enjoy getting to surf and will you look different than everybody else surfing well right now yes the culture has not gone toward people wearing glasses when they surf but if you listen to surf simply in their podcast, they, they discuss how when they're coaching, they definitely wear sunglasses and they can understand why people might want to wear sunglasses to protect their eyes. I want to be surfing until I'm in my 70s or beyond. And one of the things that I want to prevent is having cataracts in my eyes. It's no guarantee that that's going to be preventable. But I'm trying to do now, I'm trying to do something now that can help me in the future. So those are some of the, the tips and, and reasons for keeping your glasses on your head. I think that 
this technique very simple of making a leash that's just the right length with these carabiners will also be applicable to the other sports and activities that one might want to do and you probably don't need to wear a, a hat on top. For those of you who surf in the winter, you, you know that uh, you often have to wear a hood. All right, so here, just to show that this also works with a hood, you can just put that on like so, and you're good to go. I am enjoying making a fool of myself with a live stream on YouTube. This is kind of fun. All right. So if you have any other suggestions or comments about what you do to put on and keep on your glasses, please let me know. I'm very welcome to them and open to how to, to do this in kind of an affordable way. I, I think for me, one of the things that I have appreciated is not having to wear my contacts. I've lost multiple contact lenses. Fortunately, they're they're pretty inexpensive, the ones I use, but in, in, in surfing. And there are also some just uh, suggestions online that you might be um, having bacteria that could get stuck. I haven't had any issues with that. I'm not sure about that, but that is something else to, to keep in mind. And I think that's about all I want to say about keeping your glasses or sunglasses on your face. I hope some of you will find this information useful as you continue to surf in the, in the future or do other activities. As is common, I like to talk, well, maybe not common, but this is our third time meeting and having this release of surf talk at least to the internet, <laughs> if not to, to others that I know personally. I like to discuss my last surf session and when I plan to go surfing this next week, and then we can go to Zoom afterward. So how was my last surf session? It was fun, it was nice. We had pretty good waves come in through New Jersey on Sunday and Monday. I was even looking at Saturday, this past Saturday, and I wanted to go out, but decided I couldn't really leave my family to do that. Sundays, as I've discussed previously, are often filled with things for church, so I didn't go out on Sunday, although other people did, and I even looked at the webcam a little bit. I was like, oh, the waves look pretty good. They would be good for someone who surfs weekly. Not too big, not too small, but nice. So then Monday morning, I went out to surf and I got out in the water probably around 7.15 or so and had a lot of fun. They weren't the biggest waves. They weren't as nice from what I could tell the prior day, but two, three, occasionally four feet in size and far apart. So plenty of time, nice, easy going paddling. I was out with a 6.4 NSP board and I was actually thinking, oh, I should have probably taken my, my foamy eight footer and had a good time, but it was still a lot of fun on that board. I was at one of the most popular places in New Jersey down at Belmar and because it was cold and I think also the waves weren't quite as good as they were the previous day, I had the south side of this jetty all to myself. It was wonderful. So when you're by yourself, it makes things a little bit more fun sometimes and a little bit more intimidating, right? There's no lineup, so you can't gauge exactly where you should be based on where everybody else is. But you know that where you catch the wave was your decision. And that's very rewarding for a surf session to know that you were figuring it out where you should be. Your wave selection was completely dictated by your own choices instead of following a crowd. During that session, there were, were one or two other people on the other side of the jetty, so we were completely not interfering with each other. And then 
down by another jetty that was south of us. I saw another person out there, so I felt pretty safe. I like surfing at the more popular spots in the winter because there are usually other people out there that I feel if I got into some serious situation would be hopefully willing to to help make sure that I'm okay and feel a little more secure about that. When do I plan to go surfing this next week? Well, let's take a look at Surf Forecast. We have what looks to be some pretty nice waves coming into town on Sunday, at least for those of us who surf, quote, weekly. A 13 second period at three feet should be okay. Or, or two and a half at 11 should be okay as well. That should be, that should be fun. The wind is going to be offshore. 15 miles per hour is a little high for what I would like with these types of waves, but that's great. Fortunately, again, I can't go out on Sunday. So I may try to go out later in the week, but Monday is not looking super great. Tuesday, the wind's not super bad, but not super cooperative, and the waves are also not very cooperative. Hopefully Wednesday, because the wind looks good, maybe the swell will increase a little bit and we'll get some more waves, I hope. I'm not sure. And then that takes us into Thursday and Friday. And I don't know. I mean, if the wind dies down next Friday, I might be tempted not to have a session of surf surfing weekly. I might have to go out. We'll see. But uh, it seems that after this nor'easter and this storm that's affecting the east coast including down in south florida where i'm from which if you're in south florida it looks like you're going to get some good waves this weekend but uh this this storm is going to pass and we may be going into weeks without much in terms of waves that's okay there are other things that i might end up doing I like swimming. I have a surf skate, which works outside when there's not snow all over the ground, which may not be possible after tonight and tomorrow as well. At any rate, that is our live broadcast. And I'll go ahead and I will move to Zoom, which is available in the link below. I'll be there until 12 p.m. Eastern. Have a great day. Have a great week. Thanks for, for watching.